One night, while Ying Xiong is laying on the bed playing on his phone, the electricity suddenly goes out. Master Li asks him to go check the power supply. Going upstairs, he realizes that the door to the rooftop was open. He steps out just to see a girl floating in the sky. His presence startles the girl, and as she is distracted, a stroke of lightning hits her and she falls down to the floor. Ying Xiong wants to save her, but he is a bit hesitant. But there's no other way, so eventually he gave her the kiss of life, causing a giant pole of light to tear through the sky. After waking up, Muzi slaps him right in the face for kissing her without her permission. Ying Xiong doesn't feel any guilt but adds that it was his first kiss, causing Muzi to get pissed and slaps him on the other side of his face. Then she leaves. On the way, she notices her energy drained out. And that night also marks an important change in Ying Xiong's body. The next morning, Ying Xiong suddenly feels stronger than usual. While sitting on the bench on the sidewalk, he sees a rich man inviting Muzi to a movie, but she shows no interest. Meanwhile, someone has sensed the strange energy coursing through Ying Xiong's body and decides to test him. A nail suddenly drops off the billboard, causing it to collapse to where the girl is standing. Seeing such a scene, Ying Xiong rushes to save her. Surprisingly from his hand, a light beam shoots out and pushes the board away. Right after that, Ying Xiong loses consciousness due to energy draining. He wakes up and realizes he's tied up in someone's room, and unexpectedly, it was Muzi who brought him here. She shows Ying Xiong her black sky sword, and tells him that she's actually a cultivator training to be a god. But after the kiss earlier, Ying Xiong has taken most of her accumulative power, so she wants him to be her husband and train with her. Then she brings him to the rooftop to help him awaken his true power. And her fastest way to do this is to push him down from up high because of the fact that if he didn't die from falling, one day his life would be taken away by another cultivator. After finishing the small talk, she really pushes him down. Ying Xiong tries everything to activate the power he used to save the girl this morning, but it seems that his efforts is of no use. When Ying Xiong is losing hope, Muzi approaches him and tells him that they're creating a life and death bond between the two. Ying Xiong one more time tries to calm himself and hold Muzi. At this point, from behind his back spreads out a pair of wings. He carries Muzi in his arms and flies up to the sky. How romantic this scene is. But it seems Ying Xiong breaks the atmosphere by saying that he'd fly to school instead of taking the bus, pissing off Muzi again and she immediately punches him to the rooftop. She tells him that all over the world there are countless numbers of cultivators who find ways to eliminate each other for their survival. So if his identity as a cultivator is revealed, he will end up facing death. Meanwhile, an old man has figured out Ying Xiong's new awakened power, so he asks a student of his who is Ru Yue to investigate the case. The next day, the rich guy still waits at Muzi's house to ask her out, but she replies that she can't make it as she's still tired after a night at the hotel with Ying Xiong. The rich guy is shocked to hear that and tends to punch Ying Xiong, but Muzi stops him and gives him a slap, telling him that no one can touch Ying Xiong apart from her. Muzi is disappointed that Ying Xiong is still using an old model cell phone that is limited to just calling and texting, so she gives him a new smartphone. Right now, Muzi's power is drained out after the kiss with Ying Xiong, so she can only gain it back by co-cultivating with Ying Xiong or marrying him. So he suggests the two co-cultivate right tonight. Thinking she would be mad, Ying Xiong surprised when Muzi grabs his hand and tells him that they'll practice by holding hands first. Meanwhile, Ru Yue has arrived at Ying Xiong's neighborhood, and because she doesn't have his face, she has to connect her phone to all the boys in the neighborhood. But she can only find those perverts and none of them is possessing power. At night, while Ying Xiang is chatting with Muzi, Master Li connects to Ru Yue's account. It seems that she has cast a spell on Master Li via the internet, making him out of his mind and unconsciously go out to find her. Seeing that he's not the one she's finding, she's about to leave, but Master Li doesn't let her go. She's so mad as she turns and gives him a punch causing him to fly far away. Right at the moment, Ying Xiang shows up, spreads his wings and jumps up to catch Master Li. Ru Yue quickly recognizes him as a cultivator due to his wings. After the spell is deactivated, Master Li doesn't remember anything. Ru Yue also disappears, so Master Li thought Ying Xiong had brought him here for some shady acts. Ying Xiong is scared and quickly sprints away, but then he is shot by Ru Yue's power. She casts a love spell on him. As affected by the spell, Ying Xiong keeps following Ru Yue. He even buys her grilled meatballs to propose to her. But seeing such a perverted face on him, Ru Yue can't help but slap him and take the spell back. After gaining consciousness, Ying Xiong is so confused why he followed Ru Yue to get here. And when knowing that she's also a cultivator, he immediately flies away to escape from her. But she immediately pulls him back, but accidentally takes off his pants. 
Right at that moment, Muji shows up to support her husband, but when she knows he just proposed to Ru Yue, she forces him to kneel on a keyboard. Muji realizes that Ru Yue's power is at a whole different level, which is much stronger than theirs. Even if Ying Xiang and Muzi team up, they are no match for Ru Yue. So Muzi tells Ying Xiang to go first, she'll stay to buy time for him. Right after that, due to her overwhelming power, Ru Yue almost beats Muzi within an inch of her life. She summons a giant fireball and throw it towards Muzi, but Muzi managed to create a shield to stop the attack. At the exit entrance, Ying Xiang is worried about Muzi and decides to stay to fight with her. When Muzi is unable to defend herself against Ru Yue's power and is about to be defeated by Ru Yue's weapon, Ying Xiang suddenly steps in the way and takes all of the damage. Muzi is so emotional when Ying Xiang has sacrificed his life to save her. Seeing such an irritating scene, Ru Yue kicks him aside. Ying Xiang finds himself flowing in another dimension. Here he meets a white-haired man named Li Zhuanzi. The man suddenly draws his sword and attacks Ying Xiang. Ying Xiang is surprised to see Li Zhuanzi's sword looks alike with Muzi's dark sky sword. Thanks to the fact, he knows that Li Zhuanzi is Muzi's ancestor. So he introduces himself as Muzi's husband. As his descendants are in danger, Li Zhuanzi throws a bead necklace to Ying Xiang and tells him that it will help Ying Xiang unleash his power for one minute. Right when Ru Yue is about to finish off Muzi, a collar of light hits her away. In front of her eyes, it's Ying Xiang, with longer hair carrying Muzi in the sky. Ru Yue can feel that Ying Xiang's power has been boosted massively, and he could be even a thousand times stronger than her master. Ru Yue takes her sword and rushes forward to attack Ying Xiang, but he only uses his fingers to burn down her weapon, and Ru Yue collapses under Ying Xiang's overwhelming power. Can't take this insult anymore, Ru Yue decides to kill herself, but Ying Xiang saves her, telling her that death isn't the last option. Ru Yue doesn't accept the fact that she'd lost, so she leaves right away. Muzi asks about Ying Xiang's superpower just then, but seeing that Ying Xiang has something to hide from her, Muzi takes him to the hotel nearby. She ties him on the bed and decides they'll cultivate together tonight. After Muzi gives him a kiss, Ying Xiang suddenly accesses a part of her past. The Li family was assassinated in just one night, and the culprit is a mysterious red-haired cultivator. After the cultivation night, Ying Xiang can now feel Muzi's pain of losing her family, and she swears to God that she'll find that red-haired guy to take revenge on her family. But with their level at the moment, they aren't a match for him. Ying Xiang promises to be by her side as they are now a couple of cold cultivation. Hearing such a sweet saying, Muzi gives Ying Xiang a kiss. On the way back to the dorm, Ying Xiang realizes the bees Li Zhuanzi gave him were gone. At the dorm, he's shocked to see Ru Yue in his room. Turns out, Ru Yue wants to temporarily stay at Ying Xiang's place for a few days because she has nowhere to go. Because she has nowhere to go now. While Ying Xiang doesn't know where to sleep tonight, Master Li asks Ying Xiang to sleep with him. But he's terrified and he says that he'll sleep on the floor. The next morning, a queue of boys set up to ask Ru Yue to be their girlfriend and the rich guy once again shows up to Muzi's out, but she tells him to ask Ru Yue instead of her. But Ru Yue says that the man she likes is Ying Xiang and publicly announces stealing Muzi's husband away from her. Seeing such a scene truly triggers the rich guy. That night, the three of them go to see a horror movie together, but during the film, Ying Xiang can't focus because the girls keep squeezing his arms. They even tear off his coat when leaving the theater. The next day, Ying Xiang goes to a shop and buys a gift for Muzi. On the way back, the rich guy shows up with other thugs, intending to attack Ying Xiang. But Muzi and Ru Yue soon appear and beat them up, and once again piss the rich guy off. Right after that, Ying Xiang gives Muzi two chicken plush toys. Ru Yue has had enough of Ying Xiang and Muzi being together, so she leaves the place. But they don't know that Ru Yue's master is watching them from a building. Seeing Ru Yue walking alone on the street, Ying Xiang recalls himself in the past. Ying Xiang chases after Ru Yue and asks her to be his friend. But Ru Yue rejects his request and says that she needs a lover, not a friend. Ru Yue comes back to report her failed mission to her master. The old man doesn't mind that because he's about to reach the late stage of core formation. And once he reaches that level, he himself will capture Ying Xiang and Muzi. Knowing that if her master completes his cultivation, no one can defeat him. So Ru Yue immediately leaves to find Ying Xiang and tells him about it. That night, Ru Yue meets him at the park, and she tries everything to seduce him, but he's tough, saying that he can't betray Muzi. 
After a while, Ru Yue is really pissed and starts a fight against Ying Xiong. Ru Yue constantly attacks, but Ying Xiong manages to block all of her moves. She tells him to use that overwhelming power he used earlier to fight her. But he doesn't want to as that power can only be used to protect friends. Ru Yue is touched and gives Ying Xiong a hug. Suddenly, Muzi shows up behind the two, telling them that Ru Yue's master is finding ways to take over their energy. Or worse, he even wants to take over Ru Yue's energy. When Ru Yue was a little girl, she didn't have friends and was very lonely. Just because everyone was afraid of her power. Her only friend was a snake demon living deep in the forest. But on a fateful night, the snake demon slaughtered everyone in the village, including her parents. Plucking up her courage, Ru Yue decided to find that demon and took revenge for her parents. But on the way to the cave, she met an old man who later became her master. Knowing that Ru Yue was looking for the snake demon, the man gave her a magic weapon. When she saw the snake demon, she immediately stabbed the demon with her new weapon. Unexpectedly, despite being badly injured, the snake demon still applied ointment to Ru Yue's wound and gave her a warm smile. As she knew the man possessed great power, she asked to be his apprentice. But after a while, she realized the man was cultivating black magic, for which he had to consume human blood. And it seemed that if he consumes other cultivators' blood, his power can accelerate dramatically. Ying Xiang suggests leaving everything behind, and together with Muzi, they can co-cultivate peacefully somewhere far away. But seeing the two daydreaming at night, Ru Yue brings them back to reality. Ru Yue has foreseen that after her master reaches the ultimate level of dark magic, he'd probably take her power as well. So she wants everyone to fight him together before he's completed his cultivation. That night, Muzi rented a room at the hotel. Ying Xiang thought they were about to co-cultivate again, but it turns out she rented this room so the two can have a place to discuss their plan. In their previous co-cultivation, Muzi saw great energy inside Ying Xiang, and if he can awaken that energy, they will definitely beat Ru Yue's master. Muzi does some rites to summon Ying Xiang's energy. When the rites are done, a green-haired spirit appears in front of them. This spirit represents Ying Xiang's energy, which has been in his body, and she'll listen to all of his orders as he is her master. But because Ying Xiang isn't strong enough, the spirit can't be visible for too long. The next morning, the rich guy comes to meet Ying Xiang again, aiming to take Muzi back. And this time, he hires a couple who can use magic to fight against Ying Xiang. Muzi and Ru Yue show up just in time to save him, but the couple is quite strong so they easily capture the girls. At this point, Ying Xiang summons his wings and uses his powers to fight back, yet is beaten right away. Fortunately, his spirit, seeing her master in danger, shows up and uses Ying Xiang's great power to beat the couple. The couple then gets down on their knees asking for the girl's forgiveness. The rich guy is also excited to see Ying Xiang having such a powerful female servant. So he asks his butler to hire some servants. Muzi threatens the rich guy not to bother Ying Xiang anymore. Unless he wants to die, causing him to be so scared that he runs away and trips on the floor. Ru Yue is surprised to know that the green haired girl is Ying Xiang's spirit energy. But he suddenly realizes she is actually a product of Li Zhuangzi's speeds. And to make it easier for them to communicate, he gives her a name, which is Ling Er. When everyone separates to work out their plans against the old master, Ling Er opens a portal to bring Ying Xiang to another place for his cultivation. Ying Xiang is amazed by the magnificent view around him. Ling Er tells him that his energy isn't a result of cultivation, but came from Muzi, so Ying Xiang can't control it easily like the others. She asks him to sit down and she'll help him to train on his own energy. Ying Xiang thought Ling Er wanted to co-cultivate with him, but she says she wanted to transfer energy the normal way. After that, Ling Er transfers great power into Ying Xiang's body. He feels like he's being electrocuted, but he still endures it until the practice ends. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a tree demon attacks the two. But Ying Xiang only needs a slight move to turn the tree demon into ash. He now realizes he can control its energy, and Muzi calls him back to follow their plan. Muzi takes him to a store selling magic weapons for cultivators, and she gives him some money used in the cultivator world to shop around. Seeing Ying Zhang is quite foolish, the sales girl tricks him to buy an old rusty knife at a great cost. But when Ying Zhang and the girl leave the store, the owner is shocked to see his precious knife was gone. Ru Yue goes back to report to her master, but he has figured out that Ru Yue is plan with Ying Zhang to fight against him, so she has to run away from him as fast as possible. Meanwhile, Ling Er tells Ying Zhang that there's a red dragon sealed inside the knife, so it carries tremendous power. 
and after trying a little power from the knife, Ying Jiang can create many copies of himself. Suddenly, Ying Jiang hears from Ru Yue that her master has figured out their plan, so they immediately head to her place to support her. The master reveals that he let Ru Yue become his apprentice just to wait for the day to occupy her energy. When the master is about to finish off Ru Yue, Ying Jiang shows up just in time and punches him out far away. Everyone surrounds the master and is determined to have a death match with him. But all of their attacks can't pierce through his shield, and he only needs a simple move to badly hurt the girls. However, Ying Jiang managed to injure the old man with his knife and he realizes he can beat him with it. The master gets angry and rushes forward to hold Ying Jiang's neck, but what he's holding is the young man's clone. Catching the old man off guard, Ying Jiang constantly attacks him. Seeing that it is not easy to defeat Ying Jiang, the master issues magic that can suck up opponent's energy and blood. But Ying Jiang has summoned Ling Er to stop his attack move. The old man keeps attacking, but Ling Er's shield is too strong for him. Ling Er stays to buy everyone time while they are escaping. When they are safe, Ling Er comes back to Ying Zhang's body. They set up bait in the forest to lure the master. Very soon, the master catches up with them and falls into their trap. Together, taking such an advantage, everyone ambushes the old man. But unexpectedly, he can easily break the strategy and injure all of them. So Ling Er once again appears to help them out. At this point, the master tells Ru Yue that it was him that controlled the snake demon and killed her village years ago. As he saw that Ru Yue can be a cultivator and he wanted to train Ru Yue so one day he can take her energy. After knowing that, Ru Yue turns back and constantly attacks her master. Taking the advantage that the old man is defending against Ru Yue, Ying Zhong throws his knife at the man's belly. But he doesn't seem to get hurt after the stab. Meanwhile, the rich guy's private jet in the sky suddenly breaks down and everyone leaves the jet. Luckily, his butler grabs a parachute and saves the two of them. At the same time, Muzi flies to the jet and tries to absorb all the lightning energy into her dark sky sword. She drags the whole jet down right at the old man. The master can feel the great energy coming from Muzi's sword, but he can still block her attack. When Muzi is blown away, Ying Jiang manages to catch her, and the two together cuts off one of the old man's arm. The master still tries to suck up everyone's energy. He pulls Muzi towards him and makes a move to finish her. Seeing his lover die, Ying Jiang breaks down and transforms into his ultimate form. He uses the knife to dissolve the master's body. The master then creates the earth wall around Ying Jiang to trap him. But he's still able to get out of it and then makes his last move to totally finish off the old man by drowning him in the fire. When Ying Jiang is in sorrow holding Muzi's dead body in his arms, the eye that has been watching Muzi in Ying Jiang appears in the sky. Turns out the eye is the embodiment of Li Zhuangzi, the ancestor of Muzi. Li Zhuangzi uses his power to save her from death. In the end, Muzi takes Ying Zhang back to her hometown. Here, they vow to spend the rest of their lives together, for better or for worse. That wraps up this anime recap. As usual, the name of this anime will be in the comments. This series has already ended and it has a total of 15 episodes. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up if you did, don't forget to subscribe for more anime recaps and also hit that bell icon to be notified for new uploads. See you all next time.